First of all, I'd like to introduce Kelly Hartman, Chief People Officer at Flywire. Thank you so much for having me. Um, very important to discuss all of these issues today because I think it's just really important that we're going through this as a first time, as a pandemic, the, the whole world. And I think it's really good to, to hear from other people and, and learn what others are doing. And I know I'm gonna take away um, just as much from, from, my, um, from my panelists today too. So I just think it's really important that, you know, we, we learn from one another. And, and, you know, we're in this together. Thank you, Kelly. Next, I'd like to introduce Ben Golden, Chief Technology Officer and Chief Product Officer at Mambo. Hi, all. Uh, thanks a lot for having me here. Uh, well, agree with Kelly. I think it's a great opportunity uh, to be here and to learn from each other, uh, but also uh, what might be even more important uh, to bring these learnings from, uh, uh, from today is also to beyond the uh, pandemic, right, and see how we can apply the practices and the things we uh, developed during these times uh, to our life uh, after the pandemic will be over. Great, thank you. And finally, I'd like to introduce our third speaker today, Tadas Vizgar, the Managing Director at Shift for Payments, Lithuania. Hey, everybody. Um, thank you very much, Gintada. Thank you, uh, everybody who's joining at this hour. It's not so late, but it's also coming, coming uh, close to the end of the day. It's a crazy world out there. Uh, we've learned a lot over the last, uh, you know, four to six weeks. I think uh, the real learning is going to be over the next four to six weeks. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to have the opportunity to uh, learn from uh, Kelly and Ben what they're doing uh, and how they're dealing with this and their company with the companies. Um, enjoy the next hour, and I hope uh, that this is useful. Thank you, Tadis. Thank you all for joining us today. So before we kick off the discussion, I'd like to encourage everyone in the audience to post their questions in the Q&A section, and we will try to answer as many of them as possible during the discussion. Uh, so let's start with the first question to Ben. Mambu is the cloud platform for banking and lending businesses that's powering neobanks, top tier banks, and telcos. You operate in 26 countries uh, across six continents. What organizational changes have you had to implement in response to COVID-19 situation? Have you had to adapt your business model, structure, processes, or perhaps even teams? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for that question. So, uh, well, just to clarify first, we operate in 60 countries uh, across the globe, so it's not 26. Uh, uh, but we do have offices in, um, I think, eight countries uh, today. And uh, yeah, we had to transition pretty much in every country to remote working uh, in a matter of one week. Uh, it started uh, in Singapore, but then very quickly um, rolled to all other countries, including Lithuania as well. I think one of the major things uh, we had to transition, it was a bit of uh, accidental. We were uh, in the middle of um, introducing laptops to all of our engineers, uh, and but uh, still some of our engineers were working on uh, um, on the stationary uh, IMAX uh, that are more uh, desktop and not portable. So uh, for us, probably among all the things, the most challenging one was to organize logistics and make sure all of our engineers can get their IMAX at home, right? So we, uh, we had to hire a taxi and actually physically bring uh, IMAX um, to the locations of our engineers, to the ones who didn't have a laptop at that point in time. Uh, but then we uh, we easily easily fix that. Uh, for the rest, our organization was uh, very much ready for remote working. We obviously uh, applied all of the tools that we needed. Right, we had the, most of our conversations done asynchronously, anyways, uh, using Slack, uh, using some conferencing uh, tools, uh, especially because of the distributed nature of the company. Right, we. We anyways had to communicate between eight offices um, all the time. So it was uh, in most uh, of the cases business as usual. Uh, some people other than uh, maybe uh, less than others were uh, used to uh, talking remote uh, instead of just coming by your desk and uh, having a chat, but uh, they adjusted uh, quickly. Um, yeah, so... Uh, this would be uh, this would be our main uh, main main challenges in transition. Thank you. It seems that you've been sort of 
born ready, I suppose, for, for remote working. And uh, uh, Tadas, I'd like to also ask you, um, so you manage Lithuanian subsidiary of uh, Ship for Payments, um, which is one of the leaders in secure payment processing and merchant services solutions. Uh, and most of your team is actually based in the US with a team also in Lithuania. Were there any specific organizational changes that you took as a global organization or perhaps some that you took here in Lithuania? Well, um, you know, as far as the organization goes, uh, we uh, have made some changes in our strategy, our development strategy. Uh, we're we decided that during this period, uh, it's best not to just do business as usual because it's really not as business as usual, uh, especially since our vertical, uh, our client vertical, uh, our restaurants, hotels, bars, casinos, uh, we, we all know what's happening with that, those verticals. Uh, so uh, we decided to shift all of our efforts into uh, key areas, key products, and Icebox products that are, you know, maybe a year or two down the road, we can afford to do that. Uh, it's best to focus right now on what you want to get out the door, get those new releases out, uh, make it all as efficient as possible. So it's kind of an all hands on deck uh, type of atmosphere uh, at Shift 4. Uh, where we're just trying to refocus what our priority, focus on our uh, uh, new priorities, let's say. Um, and uh, it's working great. Uh, you know, we're, we, we joined a lot of uh, different teams, glued them together, uh, and uh, uh, it's working fantastic uh, to date. Um, as far as what Ben said, yeah, the, the whole logistics of, uh, you know, it was, a, it was an evacuation at the end of the day. It wasn't a, a migration to work from home. Uh, but thankfully, uh, I went against uh, uh, our management's uh, uh, advice not to buy laptops at the beginning of February, but I ended up uh, silently doing that, and uh, it turned out to be a very good decision because it was very easy to get to the next stage going uh, to work from home. It's just planning it, you know, it happened on a Monday, we made, uh, we made sure that only two people would come to the office at a time uh, to get their uh, equipment. And we're talking about not just a laptop and a monitor, uh, we're talking about an entire POS system that, you know, with printers and credit card readers with absolutely everything. Uh, and then getting everybody VPN access uh, from home uh, was another challenge. Some people didn't have internet, so we had to provide internet as well. Uh, so there was a lot of planning put into, into place, but, uh, we really uh, never saw a dip in production other than the first couple of days. Great, thank you. And uh, uh, Kelly, I know that you were uh, part of uh, the crisis management team at Flywire. So for those who don't know, Fly is, Flywire is the leading global payments platform, uh, which has offices in 12 locations globally <laughs> with over 550 employees. Uh, at least that's the data that I have. I um, <laughs> hope that's correct. Um, so could you share what was the process and what were the steps in organizing your top leadership's uh, response to crisis and perhaps the lessons learned or actionable guidance to others who may be thinking of forming that team? Yeah, so I think what we did first off, and we haven't had any, um, you know, significant material changes to our org structure, but what we quickly formed was what we called the COVID-19 response team, which is really a tiger team. So we didn't want to take up all the time of all of our executives, um, you know, to, to be part of this daily team. Um, I was actually in Boston at the time, so I'd been traveling for a month all over to, to a lot of our locations. And then, you know, they started closing borders and and we got this response team together and it really comprises of our CEO, our president and our COO, um, our chief security officer and um, myself at the time. And then we added people to, to, to this team. So we've added our CFO and our SVP of marketing. And that's because... We didn't want to worry, you know, our sales teams and other teams. We want them focused on and doing what they need to do. But how do we focus on, you know, the organisation and and getting getting things, you know, we, because things are changing so rapidly in in the environment. So we've got offices in in, in Shanghai and China and and Singapore. So we knew the COVID nineteen impact there first, and we started closing offices down. But 
daily, you know, um, in government changes, um, every day, new cases. And so, you know, slowly it was a response team that decided, okay, what, what, you know, um, offices we needed to close and, and, you know, and, and then, you know, first of all, you know, Spain and then, you know, the Americas and the UK. So, you know, those things change um, rapidly. We knew that we needed to communicate to our organisation um, constantly because things were updating and they were asking us a lot of questions. And one of the really great things we did early on was we started having all company q and A. So, you know, very, very transparent, um, you know, a lot of questions about, you know, not just our business, but, you know, are people allowed to still work from the office? And, you know, at, at the first few weeks, people were allowed to work from the offices because, you know, we didn't know what was going to be the impact. But obviously, over the last, you know, four or five weeks, you know, um, countries are in complete lockdown. And, and you know, so we, 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 we closed offices. Our, you know, thinking behind not closing all the offices at first is that, you know, similarly to what Tata said, there were people that didn't have Wi-Fi or people that just couldn't work from home because the environment wasn't set up. So we were being flexible in terms of that, but really looking at the safety. We also had to register. So we've got to register for anyone that had COVID because then we had to know, hey, had they been in the office prior or the other people that impacted? Um, we still have new cases arising every day. And, and now it's not that, you know, it's been long since they've been, um, you know, around other fly mates, um, but it's also now to, to make sure that, you know, um, as we, you know, maybe return to some offices, particularly now in Shanghai, has anyone been affected? And then to give them the care and support that they need, um, which is very important. So, one of our key takeaways is fine tuning our communications. I think people felt very overwhelmed and that's why we had our Q&A. So we transitioned away from the constant communication daily and in specific channels to the Q&As. And, and obviously we, we, we've got different nationalities and, and particularly in our Asia population, they don't like asking questions during a Q&A. So we field all the questions prior and we have them on the screen and very transparent. And I think um, our flymates are very candid in, in the questions that they ask. Uh, I think it's actually great that you mentioned Q&A, so I'd like to encourage our audience also to post any questions that they have. Uh, please don't be shy, this is the chance to um, know what the, the, the leaders of you know, fabulous companies are thinking, so um, uh, do uh, post the questions in the Q&A section. So moving forward, uh, I think probably uh, we sort of got a, a hint in terms of, uh, you know, there was some preparation already uh, by the, you know, by the thing that the, the companies already were working, you know, remotely, some of the employees. Do you think that um, tech sector's resilience to the crisis is, um, is a bit stronger? What are your thoughts on that? And perhaps starting with you, Ben. Yeah, sure. So uh, let me put it that way. So from one perspective, uh, tech companies are obviously a bit more resilient, right? We are very much used to a distributed way of working. Some companies are fully remote, right? So we have quite few examples in the market of uh, tech companies that are uh, completely uh, remote from day zero, right? So from tools and, and processes perspective, yes. Then from people uh, perspective, I think uh, all of us are equally vulnerable, right? And it doesn't matter whether you are in the tech industry or in any other industry. If uh, out of sudden uh, all your surroundings changed and the only thing you see is your, uh, let's say, corner in, in, at home, uh, let alone situations where you have uh, kids running around or uh, you need to share the space with your spouse, uh, right, so there are many challenges that are beyond uh, what company can offer, uh, right, as a, as, a, um, uh, as a tech uh, company or a regular company. And here we need to be extra cautious, right, and we need to do uh, some extra measures, starting with organizing some casual chats throughout the day, uh, right. What we do, uh, we have uh, remote lunches together. Uh, we also do uh, weekly drinks, right? We have a Friday drinks that I am now skipping. Uh, oh no, that today is Thursday, sorry. I'll be skipping that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Friday drinks uh, that we also uh, conduct uh, virtually. Uh, some other teams have uh, uh, coffee breaks, right? Like our team in Lithuania, uh, they, uh, they do have um, uh, morning coffees together. 
uh, onboarding needs to be done differently, right? Uh, imagine a situation when uh, a person joins the company and have no ability to come and pick up uh, uh, pick up the laptop and uh, other things, right? So uh, we need to organize logistics for the onboarding, but also make sure the person uh, receives a proper welcome uh, and uh, feels uh, safe in the new environment and gets enough attention uh, in the first couple of days. So we also organize uh, extra additional uh, get to know meetings, uh, virtual get to know meetings, and uh, extra chats with a direct uh, uh, manager of that person. So, uh, yeah, so just to sum up, I think uh, 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 very important aspect uh, uh, that is not related to technology, not related to processes, is how uh, we treat our people and how we help our people to cope with the situation. Uh, that's uh, that's probably at the core of of, of how uh, organizations uh, are able to manage the crisis, uh, the communication and the leadership that's engaging with uh, with their employees and teams. Uh, Kelly, would you like to add in uh, in terms of from your people's perspective, uh, what are some of the measures that you take to ensure that leadership is visible and employees feel the pulse? Sure. I think, um, you know, saying, you know, exactly the same as Ben, you know, our CEO says it all the time. If we're thinking about productivity over our people, then we're focusing on the wrong thing. So it's really about leading with empathy. Um, I think we had that already in our organisation, which is why I chose Flywire to work with Mike. He, he's an incredible empathetic leader, um, you know, that really cares about people. So it's about being truly flexible because people are really anxious at the moment. They're anxious for their jobs. They're anxious about, am I, you know, one thing that keeps coming up is, am I, am I being a good parent? Am I being a good mother? Am I being a good, um, you know, employee to Flywire? Because actually, you know, I'm doing homeschooling and I'm doing this, you know, there's other people that are living alone and, and they feel anxious and they're not focused as much. So it's, it's allowing the flexibility, you know, it's not uncommon for some of our senior executives to be nursing their children while on calls. And, you know, we sort of just get in and we, we get to know families at a, a completely different level. Um, our CEO and some of the executives, sometimes, you know, they just, it, like we would in the water cooler, Mike usually does this anyway, or I do, I'm like, hey, Who's, who's coming downstairs in 10 minutes, the first 10 to put their thumbs up, you know, I'm taking you for coffee, I'll take you for lunch. So we sort of do that, you know, in a, in a hangout. He may be spontaneous and sometimes we could get 50 or 60 people. Um, each location is the same. So we do a lot of round, um, around tables. So we've just done an acquisition. So, you know, timing for that. Um, we, 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 we received $120 million investment and acquired a company in Jan, February this year, which is why I was away, like, doing that so they haven't done their full onboarding yet so you know changing onboarding to on uh, online but getting them to meet the executives as they would in person because we'd usually fly them fly them to boston um so there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings there's a lot of just check-ins with people and sometimes it's just not about work you know sometimes it's just like how are you doing are you okay um as you know, I've said before, we do a lot of office, like we've got 12 offices. So, you know, they have their morning chats in the morning for anyone that come in my PNC team. Every day we have a, a chat for people that want to join. Um, but we've also got an Asia team. So I sort of split it so then I can be, be available for others. So again, you've got to be wary that, you know, you're just not having a Q&A or an old company meeting at one time. We still have to do it at the different times to cover different time slots. I personally, we've got 30 new starters. So every day, you know, I have about three or four people that I call just to see how they're going and check in. And I think a lot of our executives do that too. They just, you know, ring random people and give them a call. But a lot of it is 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 done on um, Hangouts and, and Zoom. But some people don't want to be seen because, you know, they've got too many gray hairs at the moment or they're different this. So, you know, I think it, we, we're just very flexible and, and making sure that, you know, in every you know, every meeting we have, like we, we, we say, you know, today I just had a meeting with one of, you know, my senior leadership team and um, one of the girls, her, 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 her children were coming in every two minutes and I'm like, you know, don't worry about it. Like it's gone. And then I, I started speaking to her daughter and asking her what she's doing for the day. So I just join in that conversation so people don't feel uncomfortable. And I think it's about 
allowing and giving permission and, and focusing on the people first and their well-being and, and, and the rest will come. And being very flexible with hours, you know. I know people that are homeschooling, so they start their day at 2 o'clock at night. I tend to work till, till midnight a lot of the nights because I've got head office in Boston and my mornings, I just walk in the park for, for hours and I do my calls there if I want and sometimes I have time out. So, so being flexible for that. Great, thank you, Kelly. That's uh, that's really um, great, and I think we we, we are seeing a lot of uh, personal um, uh, sides of our employees and 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 the partners. Uh, you know, we see the insides of the homes, we see the pets, the families, and I think it's important to acknowledge that uh, everyone has a lot of um, additional challenges that they're dealing with. Uh, the ones that you know are yeah. on top of everything else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I was just going to say, I think one of the things that we really made important is to get our EAP system straight up because we have like a lot of private health care for, our, for our, our fly mates that is very different in every single region. So now we're making sure that everyone has psychological support to, to help them through this too. So I was just going to add that and people feel more connected to fly mates than they ever had because they're seeing this different side. So they're getting to know people at a completely different level. Great, thank you. And uh, uh, I'll ask Tadas, but again, you know, uh, if, if you all have to contribute, please share if you have any personal strategies, how you deal with stress, how you deal with, you know, uh, again, you know, additional challenges that are presented both, you know, by, uh, you know, being a leader and managing a organization that's going through such a massive change, but also, you know, having additional pressure at home, potentially with family or dealing with isolation and, and, and other uh, things that might come your way? Well, I think it's really not a matter of locking yourself up uh, in an office and sitting in front of a computer all day. Uh, we all, we're all human. Uh, we, need, uh, we need to you know, look after our health. We need to go outside. That's what really gets the stress off for me. Um, I built a, a, a small little golf course on the other side of my fence uh, where there's some construction going on but no buildings yet. Uh, so I just go out and I whack about 30, 40 balls, come back in, work a few more hours, go back out outside again. Uh, and I notice that the weather really makes things a bit different when it's dark and rainy, which Lithuania is very much renowned for. Uh, that makes things a little bit more difficult. You have to motivate yourself a little bit more. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's really about, like Ben and Kelly said, it's people over productivity. Um, I spend a lot of time uh, reaching out uh, to my direct team. Uh, we have uh, uh, not daily meetings, but a meeting every two days, which is about an hour long, where we go around and we discuss if, is there anything that we can be doing better uh, as a management team uh, to help uh, our teams working from home with all the stress, all the distractions, everything. Uh, and that works uh, very well. Um, one thing that I did that I don't think I could probably do again, uh, we have 120 employees in Vilnius. Uh, the three days leading up to Easter, I called each and every person, every single employee, and I thought, well, it's going to be maybe like a three-minute conversation. Uh, no, uh, you know, there were, it was, it was three minimum and 20 uh, was uh, uh, the maximum. But when you add that all up, 120 phone calls, uh, my iPhone was ready to, you know, melt in my hand every evening. Uh, but uh, it, it came across very, very well. And what was nice, the nicest thing for me about it is because the, the 20 minutes uh, was because I got questions. So how are you doing? Uh, and I wasn't expecting that. And so when you're speaking to team members, you shouldn't look at it as a, you know, checking the box uh, next to each name. Yes, I called him, I called him, I called him. It's really, you know, taking the time to, to talk and not talk about work, talk about what's going on in life. How's your family? How are your parents doing? Uh, because, you know, most parents are in, 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 in the risk groups. Uh, so, you know, you have to speak like a person, like a human being and not like, uh, you know, you take off your leadership hat on that one uh, and you simply act uh, as though you're just uh, a friend or a family member because we are, we are all our family uh, at shift four here in Lithuania, especially. It's a very tight knit group of people. Uh, and, and that's how we treat each other. <clears throat> but going back to what Ben said, as far as uh, examples, yeah, I mean, we're doing online birthday parties, uh, coffee with C-suite uh, members. Uh, we are, we're organizing the town hall meetings. 
We've created the virtual break rooms. Uh, we're doing gaming tournaments, uh, online workouts with a professional trainer, uh, uh, you know, best, best workstation contests, uh, you know, who can decorate their home workstation most creatively. Um, uh, happy hour, formal Fridays, Thursday, thirsty Thursdays, you know, we're, we're just promoting fun and it's not just, you know, the productivity part. So that's, that's like number one on my list is to make them feel uh, as though it's, you know, they can go out to a bar, do a team building, whatever. Uh, but it has to be online, unfortunately. And, and we'll, we'll all get the opportunity to do it again, real time, uh, not virtually, but uh, yeah, looking for that. Another uh, idea is uh, rewarding uh, teams for milestones. Uh, getting uh, some champagne delivered uh, to the house to their houses so they can toast each other. Uh, we order lunches for team members uh, as well, so they can kind of do like team buildings in that sense. So they each uh, you know go into their little hangout and uh, and and have lunch together. Uh, so it's little things like that, uh, but they really mean a lot. That sounds amazing. It's like you know some people would probably wish that would never stop. <laughs> Uh, but thank you so much for sharing and uh, I looked at the questions from our audience and um, I think we've answered quite a few of them in terms of the balancing the family and work life and, and, and dealing with the personal challenges. Uh, one of the questions uh, that I think is interesting um, is uh, from all of the obstacles that your organization faced during this uh, period, what was the biggest one? Uh, ben, could you start off? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, probably, so one I already mentioned, it's a bit more related to logistics, right? Because uh, uh, this whole crisis, if I may call it that way, uh, hit us uh, unexpected, uh, right? So we had to adjust very quickly uh, to, uh, to specific logistics that were related to uh, uh, what computers we use or how we do onboarding. Uh, but that was easy to solve and the second one is is people right and that and that's something we uh, all three of us uh, covered uh, uh, just now um, uh, to to a greater extent um, yeah pretty much uh, making sure people still feel as part of a, some sort of community people who need help uh, get help and communication right so some of us already mentioned that I think communication is very important and we uh, so what we communicated on so we started with obviously guidelines on uh, uh, going to the office or not going to the office uh, but then we went to guidelines on uh, really how you should balance uh, your work day with uh, what happens after your work day right because one of the biggest challenges when you uh, when you work from home uh, there's no clear cut on when your day starts and when your day ends right so we really uh, introduced the guidelines and, and encouraged people to close their laptop uh, five or six o'clock, whatever their day uh, ends, and, and really uh, uh, take a break. There will be always a next day, uh, and there will be always one more email or one more task you want to do, right? So you, you have to decide that it's the end of the day. We also shared few practices like uh, uh, having a rituals, right? So how your day starts and how your day ends, uh, starting with changing your clothes to uh, uh, literally telling yourself that this is end of day and closing the laptop and uh, going to a different uh, location from that moment. But also encouraging to take uh, actual day offs and, 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 and even holidays, right? If you uh, do have a possibility, uh, let's say, if you do have what to do at home, we do encourage to take uh, day offs. Um, and the summer schedule is approaching. We at Mambo, we work four days a week uh, during summer. Uh, so that uh, yet another thing that will, I hope, positively contribute to the well-being uh, of the people um, uh, during the summer. Uh, yeah, uh, communication, uh, going back to communication. So uh, one other thing we constantly communicate on is on the state of the business. Um, right, uh, as Kelly mentioned, uh, many people are afraid of their job. They're not sure whether a company performs well, right? So we need to reassure that things are going well, everything is all right. Uh, if there are any challenges, we need to uh, give heads up, right? So uh, maybe that particular customer experienced some challenge, and uh, we want to make sure people are uh, uh, people are aware, and we 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 help uh, we help our customers, right, to go over uh, some of the challenges. So uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, these are these are the most important uh, things to take care of. 
Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we also have some uh, new questions coming in, which is great. So uh, perhaps we can uh, switch to um, to teamwork and collaboration as uh, as, as our sort of next uh, theme. And uh, now that everyone is working remotely. Do you see uh, any effective tools or means how to ensure that um, effective team collaboration and, 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 and teamwork uh, as long as um, you know, communication lights keeping open, keeping open, but also getting the, 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 the results and getting the things done? Uh, perhaps uh, let's start with, uh, with Sadas. Uh, Tadas, could you please unmute yourself? Sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's the teamwork and collaboration. Uh, all of that is uh, extremely important, obviously, uh, the human side. But, you know, when you look at the tools and everything that we're using, uh, video, we're using one of the greatest uh, inventions of all pandemics right now, right? It's called Zoom. Uh, there's also Microsoft Teams, there's also Slack, there's also Google Hangouts, there's all these other wonderful tools out there. Um, but, you know, it's it, it becomes a little bit overwhelming to be on video conference all day and, uh, you know, everybody seeing you and you seeing everybody. It's great, but I still promote over communicating instead of uh, not communicating enough. I think using video as often as possible uh, is very important, but I've realized that some people kind of have a habit of, you know, their, their, their cameras break for some reason. They don't work. Uh, something's wrong with the camera. And uh, I said, okay, well, you know, call up uh, our, our IT guy, Robert, and he'll, uh, he'll take you through it. Well, uh, Robert never gets the call and the camera never works. And it's because they don't want to. So, you know, I realized, okay, after the second time, I'm not going to ask a third time. It's just who they are. And you don't want to force people in it because it's uncomfortable, uh, really, for them. I think uh, uh, I'm veering off a little bit here on the communication part, but doing shorter meetings more often, uh, I find out that to be a lot more effective uh, than actually doing longer meetings once per day or once per week or whatever it is. Um, you know, I have to put myself in the shoes uh, of, of my developers in a lot of cases where they've got their scrum ceremonies going constantly where they have meeting after meeting after meeting, but still for them as well, it's easier to have short but sweet meetings instead of going into a lot of detail. Um, and as far as the most difficult part, uh, uh, because Ben was answering that question, the most difficult part of this whole experience uh, was really not panicking yourself and not trying to get that, not to have that feeling of anxiety. Um, and it's not about, you know, using some sort of pharmaceuticals to, to solve that problem. It's about uh, really uh, coming to terms and it's not about you, it's about all of us. It's, a, uh, it's about the team. And uh, there's a, a lot, there's people out there that are gonna be way more nervous about what's going on. So it's a, it's a huge relief to actually go out and have a video chat with, with everybody, uh, even the one-on-ones, the -on and just like kind of calm them down and calm yourself down at the same time. Believe what you say. Great advice. Thank you, Tadas. And Kelly, um, were there any uh, perhaps new programs that you've started using or new uh, uh, solutions that you've implemented to sort of uh, to ensure that the, the team collaboration is uh, going on smoothly uh, between the flymates? Um, so I think we, all, we, we are already using Google Hangouts. We use Zoom more too as well. Um, we use Slack. We use, you know, Google Slides, like collaborative tools that, you know, you can work on documents together. So I think we've always been collaborative because we do work over 12 offices and we've got, you know, maybe 60 to 100 new, new flymates, you know, remote flymates. So I think the challenge was, you know, the remote flymates at the start were saying, you know, of course, they're great, they give tips, they've got experience, but, you know, it was a reminder that this is not remote learning as they've had it, you know, they're, they're then, and, and actually some of our remote flymates were, were really, 
struggling too because they've got kids at home or partners at home and it's a very different setup. So it was a real reminder that, hey, this is not remote working in its ideal function because there's so many other factors, um, you know, impinging on that. I think one of the things too, you know, when you talk about one of the challenges and obstacles was we don't know what's going to happen every day. So it is, you know, as, as Tardis and Ben said, it is keeping people calm and, you know, knowing what's happening for, for different people. And when you've got a workforce of 550 people, you also obviously rely on, you, you know, your business partners, your PNC business partners, because what's happening for one person isn't another. And, and how do we help that person when some of us aren't professional psychologists and things like that? So I see the wellness. So we set up a wellness committee, which is really, really a pretty amazing thing. And I, I you know, I'm a, I study psychology myself, so I do the check-ins with people and it becomes sort of not a counselling session, but a recognition that, um, you know, people I'm alone. I think we set up a lot of support groups because as I said, there's new parents. There are people that are living alone and their families are away. And I think um, I'm the only executive that is single and without a family. So it was easy for me to set up that. And probably one of the things was that so many people said, Kelly, wow, like this is like, we, we know that it's really tough to, you know, multitask and have, you know, children at home and whole homeschooling, but we seem we sometimes feel like we're forgotten and we're not important. So, and, and, and I know that a lot of them are really struggling with this because, so it's easy to have a senior executive that can help, you know, with that. And we had a social, um, social activity and we, for all of those that are, you know, wanting to know some sort of activities, we use um, Kahoot a lot. So Kahoot is an online quiz game and we do that in a lot. And, you know, we do that with the London office every week and it's a guess who, you know, or um, I use a game called Fibbage. If you've, if you've got less than eight people, it's an amazing lie, lie game, which, which we play online. So we, we have a lot of that. And then I started two weeks ago, a channel of inspiration, motivation for people that people, the, the biggest challenge is, and I've said it before, that we need to be kinder on ourselves. So that's the, the, the motivation there. But we're going to have, um, you know, a lot of um, psychologists and mental health, you know, practitioners come in and, and do talks a, around that too, because I feel like that is where a lot of the, the, the anxiety and things like that are coming from. So similar to, to Tardis and Ben, we do a lot of fun stuff. We play bingo. We have fitness stuff. Like last night I did a boxing class with, quite a few of my fly mates but um i think it's very important um and in same as tardis like i um we were in a little company and i just had a bad day my family are in australia and i just was quite teary the last week you know just for like a moment and i was fine and i shared that with fly mates because i want them to know that hey the c-suite are not we're not invincible to this like we have our hard days too and i think the amount of emails and like flymates I didn't even know to say, Kelly, can we have a chat? Are you okay? It was just beautiful. And I think people are like that all the time. And, you know, I think that made me more teary because it was like, look at the beauty in our people, like checking in on everyone. But I think it's really important, you know, to, to know that we're vulnerable too. And it's okay if we're having a bad day. Um, we're there to support a lot of people all the time. And, you know, you want to keep people calm, but you also want to know that hey, we're all human, you know, we're all having these moments, we're all having our challenges. Thank you. And um, I think we've spent a lot of time discussing, the, you know, the teamwork and collaboration and actually being there for, for, for our colleagues uh, during this time. Um, there's a few questions as well that are coming through that uh, people are interested in your opinion. How do you think um, the working culture will change after we come out of it you know do you think uh, we will continue to work more remotely do you think face-to-face -face meetings will be replaced by more online meetings um, just really brief uh, your thought you know how things will look like in two years time in business world perhaps Ben first yeah sure thanks thanks for that question yeah, I think it's very uh, important and interesting one, right? So we were pretty much spoiled by how things uh, were working before the crisis, right? Uh, uh, when it comes to uh, meetings, flying around, uh, meeting face to face, um, when it comes to organizing big meetings, uh, face to face meetings, even within the office uh, itself. I think what will change people, uh, I hope at least, people might get uh, used to a more remote 
collaboration with partners and customers, right? So uh, less uh, flying. And the second thing I also uh, hope uh, personally with the engineering background, I do believe a lot in uh, as we call it asynchronous communication, right? So instead of uh, organizing a meeting, why don't you try and uh, formulate yourself uh, in the email first, right? If it doesn't work, then of course, there's always a possibility to have a meeting. If you organize a meeting, why don't you uh, make it a short meeting and, uh, and a remote meeting, right? Uh, instead of having one hour, why not defaulting to 20 minutes or uh, uh, in the worst case, uh, 30 minutes? So I think we will develop these practices and people who were naturally very much against that uh, might be forced, let's say, to see benefits and potentially might even like it. So that would be my personal uh, hope to uh, how things might look after the after the pandemic. Great, thank you. Sada, do you have uh, your thoughts on how things will look like after the pandemic? Yeah, well, I have to agree with, uh, I, I love aviation. You probably guessed that um, from these folks sitting behind me. Um, but there's gonna be less travel. Uh, I used to do quarterly visits uh, to the US uh, to visit headquarters and visit our, our various uh, brands that we have in the U.S. And uh, I think that that's going to change. I mean, we we had a, a program before uh, the pandemic where we used to send uh, our developers from Lithuania to the U.S. to work side by side with their U.S. colleagues for, you know, two, three, four weeks. Uh, and then the U.S. colleagues, some of them would come here. It'd be kind of like an exchange program. And other than that, I really don't see the purpose of traveling that much anymore unless it's a conference or something like that or, or, or a convention, whatever. Um, so I think, you know, we're going to be uh, slicing our, our travel uh, budgets quite a bit, but which is really scary for the airlines uh, and, and, and whatnot. Uh, but I think that's what's going to happen globally. More remote for sure. I mean, you know, we allow for remote at shift four. Uh, but, you know, we're not, not like a permanent remote like Ben was speaking about at the beginning of this uh, 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 meeting. Um, but, you know, we, we do allow it. Uh, now, I see that it's the productivity is higher than it used to be. Uh, so I think there's, there's sometimes more distractions at work than at home. And if you could deal with your distractions at home, meaning, uh, you know, I was talking uh, before this about uh, my cats wanting to, you know, they have to run through my office uh, to get outside through the window in my office. No other exit is good for them. It's a distraction, but it's not a big one. We get used to these things. Um, uh, if I had little kids running around, yeah, that would be difficult. My, my daughters are all grown up right now and uh, yeah, they still distract, but I enjoy it because I need a break every now and then. And they say, hey, well, let's go, you know, have lunch together. Uh, so I miss that because at work, I don't get to have uh, lunch with my daughters. Um, and I think really the main thing is we're going to see a lot of video uh, meetings uh, in the in the future. Um, you know, it's uh, it's 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 inevitable. Uh, it's going to happen. Uh, the thing is, I I would love for it to be an option instead of being forced to use it. Uh, so that was difficult to to become accustomed to. Uh, but those are my top three, uh, and I think I probably repeated what Ben was saying. Uh, uh, you know, but those are the top for sure great thank you kelly would you like to add something on top mm, yeah so i we we had this conversation because i think you know our ceo and you know ourselves like you know flyway is like a big family too so i think people are really missing um the interaction so i think we're craving to go back to work obviously like we i know because we're seeing it in in china at the moment like they're that we're, we're slowly looking in and how we, we we get them back to work because you know in china a lot of the countries have so i think there'll be more flexibility we are really flexible now but i think there'll be more empathy and understanding um i do think travel will will reduce this year like we really encourage our fly mates like part of why people want to come to flyway is because they get to go to all the different offices including myself I, I've traveled a hundred countries and I um, I travel 80% of my time so um, being a, a globe a globe trotter I, I miss that and I love that um, and I don't think we will be doing as much but I do think that you know 
we, we look at it now, like we've just done this integration, as I said, and, you know, last year I could bring all our engineers together in Madrid because we were working through, you know, how they'd better work together because we had done an acquisition of two different cultures. Now we've got another one and it just does make it harder because you're working over completely different time zones, California, Tel Aviv, um, Cluj in Romania, Valencia, Boston. And if you could get that together in two days, it's, it's just easier. So I think we'll still continue to do that as, as time allows. But, you know, even going back to the office, like we're already looking at how do we go back to the office? How do we practice social distancing? Do we wear masks and gloves to work, sanitizers, only three people at a time? Like, I'd rather stay home than do that, to be honest with you. Like being a big extrovert and, and wanting hugs because that's what I am. Um, I don't think I would love to go back to work in that. But I think this is that that is what's going to change, you know, for, you know, not forever, but for, for some time to make everyone feel safe. And then, you know, the other question is we don't want to force people to go back to work if they don't feel safe or they've still got their kids that aren't homeschooling. So I think there will be changes in, in how we work and, you know, especially with social distancing, there'll be changes with, with travel. As I said, you know, that is a lot of money for our organisation we spend on and travel and expenses and things like that. But we also see that as a real investment. And I've always said that, you know, when, when our CEO comes and takes you know, the whole London office for dinner, not just the senior people. Like, that's what I do too. I go to Boston and I choose a team and who I mix, you know, and, and I still want to continue those things. I don't know if we'll be able to do them this year, but, you know, I'd like to see them, you know, in the, in, in the next few years. So I think for sure there will be people that want to work at home, but I know when speaking to a lot of the flymates, a lot of people are looking forward to going back to, you know, socialise and, and, and be with, you know, each other including myself, maybe the introverts, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think probably most of us are looking forward to actually being um, out there and, and socializing with, with, with other people. So I think uh, I will move uh, discussion to sort of to a bit uh, of the, you know, into a macro lens because we have some, uh, some questions uh, from the audience. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll uh, just read them. Um, one of them is, would you say that the current economic hold is the toughest part of the current situation or is it still up front? And I think I'll probably bundle up a few questions. So if you could, you know, pick what parts you would like to answer. Uh, then we have a question also, um, uh, whether you've identified or looked for any new opportunities that could, could come out of this crisis for your businesses. And uh, also, um, a comment on overall impact on um, uh, funding, whether it's VC funding or uh, whether there are any support measures that you are uh, uh, sort of uh, that are being offered outside or inside uh, any of the countries that you operate in. Uh, a lot of questions, I know. <laughs> um, okay, go ahead and uh, and start on that one. Great, thank you. Um, the economic is the economic uh, situation the most serious and uh, no it's, uh, it's the pandemic is still uh, number one uh, health uh, and staying healthy um, so if we go to number two yeah it's economic um, uh, I'm, I'm a bit mystified by the world markets how they're holding on so well as well as they are uh, because I thought it was going to be a lot worse uh, but the the investor confidence is still there which you know saying that funding is is going to be around as well uh, but there is a lot of unease as to the future of this as far as you know these waves that they're predicting that may possibly haven't happen uh and uh, you know looking at the fact that my my daughter is a, a studying immunology her master's in immunology uh she said this is just the first part of this whole uh, uh, coronavirus thing and, 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 and until they come up with a medicine or a vaccine. So if the investors understand that, then there's going to be a bit, you know, uh, rattled by that. Uh, but it's all about economics. And I was talking about uh, our verticals, uh, our main verticals, and we've been hit hard. Uh, we haven't had to reorganize anything yet, but it's still a, a very serious situation. Um, have we found new opportunities? Absolutely. Um, you know, we uh, we're out there as a as a POS and payments processing company. 
uh, when you get hit that hard, where we're talking about minus 80% in uh, processing volume, that's uh, enormous. Uh, trying to run a company that just lost 80% of its revenue, uh, that's really tough. Um, so when you, when you look at that, you have to look for new opportunities. And if the restaurants and the, the bars, casinos, and hotels, if they're all closed or, or working minimally with just takeout and delivery, well, then that's the, that's the game of marketing right there. You have to come up with new ways of selling uh, and lo looking for new niches as far as, you know, where your product can actually, uh, you know, evolve. So in the first week of this, uh, uh, of the pandemic in the U.S., uh, we immediately here in Lithuania, our developers jumped onto an existing uh, product, uh, which is basically a, uh, it's called SkyTab. It's a, uh, uh, online ordering, not online ordering, it's a, a order at the table, uh, a, a device. We turned it into a curbside delivery device that's not integrated with any other system. Uh, within a week, it went through QA and everything. Within one week, we launched it, and now we're selling that thing like hotcakes, and unfortunately, the, the hardware is running out, so we're actually quite kind of uh, very, very pleased with uh, the fact that China is waking up because we need, need hardware. Um, so those are the new opportunities and it's about, you know, looking at the entire uh, economic situation and the markets and everything and just finding w the formula that's going to work uh, and, and, and don't be afraid of trying something new. Thank you, Tadas. I think it's, it's probably the right approach to trial and, 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 and pivot and see what works. Ben, would you like to add anything to, to, to those uh, question points? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I would agree with status for the most of the part, but when it comes to VC, uh, let's say, um, anxiety, we do see it uh, a bit at the moment, right? Looking at our customers who started their uh, uh, endeavors and, and, and we are waiting for some funding, we do see that uh, some of the fundings are canceled. And especially we see that with investors coming from, from the States where it's a bit more uncertainty. So I think uh, it probably depends a bit on the on the region, right? So probably uh, uh, in some regions um, uh, there's still capital and, and and people are still willing to invest. In other regions, uh, people are a bit more reluctant and uh, uh, still uh, checking what's going on. And they understand as well that uh, probably when it comes to actual crisis, uh, we are just at the beginning of it, right? And we we will only see the actual. Uh, con consequence on the economies uh, uh, just a bit later, right? We start seeing it already now, but probably uh, the, the whole effect will uh, will come a bit later. So investors, uh, most of them understand that um, uh, and anticipate that. In terms of uh, opportunities, well, uh, yeah, we so our business is actually in a good spot for uh, for situations like that. We enable uh, uh digital financial institutions in the first place right so most of our customers are digital customers and uh, uh for them the business is going uh, uh, well still uh excluding maybe the new ones will still need capital but existing ones are uh, running uh, pretty well uh, right hence uh, for us that's fine it's the business that we we are in uh, apart from the fact of course that we have to help our customers uh, we need to help our customers to help their customers. Uh, we see a lot of uh, financial institutions are offering payment holidays and uh, some other uh, support to their customers, and we had to react fast. Uh, we had to make sure the capability is available in our banking platform so that our customers can easily offer payment holidays and other very important uh, measures uh, to help with, uh, with the financial uh, challenges. And at the same time, we also use that time for uh, for building the stuff that we believe will be relevant uh, right after, right? So what additional new uh, markets will open up? What potential capabilities that we wanted to build always, but we didn't have enough uh, time to do so. So uh, maybe we can focus on that uh, right now and invest more time uh, in that rather than... Um, uh, let's say, uh, trying to get more and more customers uh, 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 in this uh, short period. So yeah, that would be my answer. Thank you so much. I see that we have five minutes left, uh, so we have to be um, really concise. Uh, I think I'll, I'll just uh, 
ask uh, probably last question to each one of you. If you could um, share your thoughts, uh, uh, perhaps. Uh, uh, Mm, what uh, what 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 could be the initiatives that the leaders could think of, and and probably sharing your examples from your companies, uh, what kind of support initiatives you've launched uh, to help your clients, partners, and perhaps wider community, looking beyond uh, your immediate circle. Um, I'll do that one real quick as well. Um, well, for instance, our, our main objective is to help small businesses because that's our uh, that's our you know uh, our our lifeline. Uh, so we've created a, a a promotion in the U.S. called shiftforcares.com, and what we're doing is we're basically uh, selling. It's a platform for selling gift cards uh, to all of our uh, small restaurants in the U.S. And we're talking you know uh, hundreds of thousands, uh, and we're trying to raise. Uh, roughly about $200 million doing that. Uh, and on top of it, we're also contributing 10 million to the cause uh, just to try to, you know, uh, let, the, let the small businesses return to normal as quickly as possible, as painly as possible. So it's about giving back to the community as well. And uh, that's, uh, that's what we're doing. That's, that's really inspiring to hear. Thank you, Tadas. Kelly? I think we're doing the same as Tadas. Like we, we gave masks to different communities, particularly in, in Spain and Italy when they were running short. Um, we were helping, um, you know, medical supplies in, 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 in China, like get through their, their payments much easier. Um, with COVID related, um, you know, in our healthcare, COVID related, you know, medical bills and, you know, we're not charging anything for that. So, and then our fly mates are really interested in doing a lot of volunteer work themselves. I think, you know, particularly people that have some spare time on their hands. So we've partnered with a company called Ethical Angel and they do online volunteering. So there's no contact list. So I think a big part of it is how we, you know, do stuff in the community and then there's a lot of individuals doing their own thing and we're really promoting that um, within Flywire as well. Fabulous. And uh, Ben, over to you. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, so uh, from our side, it's mostly personal volunteering, but also what I mentioned just before, uh, we as a company, we're helping our customers because we know that uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people are hit by uh, by financial challenges, so financial institutions needs to be able um, sort of to, to address that and help uh, on the spot. So, uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing. We're completely shifting priorities, making sure we first take care of uh, things that I needed to uh, help our customers help their customers. Thank you. So, um, I think our time has come to an end. Uh, I'd like to sincerely thank um, Kelly, Ben, and Tadas for the insights, thoughts, and the practical advice that you've shared. Thank you to everyone for listening uh, to our live discussion today. We hope you found it inspiring and useful. If you have any questions or comments, drop us a line and we'll, we'll respond to you. We'll make our best. And please subscribe to our newsletter to stay on top of the news and future events. You will see QR codes for both the contact details and the subscription to the newsletter on, on your screen shortly after we finish the, the live streaming. And um, I'd like to finish with a final thought. Um, we live in the world of concern and experience probably one of the greatest challenges of our lifetimes. And uh, what gives me hope is tremendous um, human ingenuity, resilience, empathy, and kindness that you've uh, probably experienced uh, uh, from the stories that uh, our speakers shared today. And uh, perhaps this crisis gives us a unique opportunity to reimagine our future and identify new ways for our organizations at, and actually each one of us um, contribute and build a better world um, after the crisis. So with that, um, I say thank you and goodbye.